Legends of Tomorrow Season 2 Episode 3 Shogun. Now, as many of you could probably imagine, I love this episode because it had a bunch of samurai and katanas in it. it. They even threw in a little, you know, ninja moment, which was awesome. I didn't think they'd actually have that. But it's like, we got samurais and we got ninjas in that one little scene. Um, and it's funny, maybe I think I have like an insane bias for Samurai Ninja, because the whole episode, I was like, I don't know if they should be winning right now. I was like, kind of mad that they were beating up the villains, because they were all Samurai and stuff. And I was like, I don't know if the Legends would beat them, but it was a fun episode. It was actually pretty interesting going through it, and they dropped like a crazy little mystery on us with uh, 2056 Barry sending this message to Rip in like this secret sort of armory, and I'm I'm trying to figure out, like, was the armory made because of the message? Was, like, there's just, who knows what the message is, of course, so there's just a million little things going on with that, and I'm sure that won't, we won't get the answer until, like, the mid-season finale or something like that. Uh, hard to say, but I'm excited for whatever it is. I don't know if that ha that'll have anything to do with the crossover. It might, actually, now that I think about it, because they, you know, they made it as Barry. So that might have something to do with like the really giant crossover that we're going to have wherever in this season. Um, but I'm, I'm super excited to figure out what the heck this mystery is. But the rest of the episode, certainly enjoyed it. Um, Vixen had a really awesome intro in this episode where basically she heard Time Traveler and she assumed that it meant the Legends. And she was just destroying everybody. Every single person I think she took out in like one hit. And I was just like, man, she is, like, destroying the entire team. She's beating up everybody. And I guess because, you know, Mick being Mick, that was the last person that she went after. Because it's like, all right, I'll knock these guys out. But I'll kill him because, you know, he's the one who did it. So it was really cool. She had a great intro. Um, it seems as though they're establishing the fact that she is going to be a part of the Legends, which I think is really awesome because Vixen has really cool powers. And it's kind of weird because... You know, we have Vixen in the present timeline. We have uh, the animated series, which is currently in its uh, second season. And so we have, you know, present-day Vixen, who showed up in Arrow. Uh, for those of you who might not watch Arrow, she showed up. And they have a live, act, you know, live action actress for the present-day version of Vixen. But the version that we have is like the JSA 1942 version. So it's really interesting. It's like, cool, because when, when uh, Vixen finally showed up in live action on Arrow... Everyone who watched, you know, both shows was like, is she going to be, you know, part of Legends of Tomorrow? A lot of people were wondering if we get, you know, Constantine back, which I really would have loved if they brought Constantine back. But, you know, it's like, oh, is she going to be a part of Legends? And in a way, she is. I don't know if this actress is going to be um, a permanent fixture, but it seems like that's kind of what they're establishing with this episode. She can easily just go right back to her own time, which, by the way, would not um, include wearing that, like, badass leather uh, black outfit she was wearing at the end of the episode where she's just like about to ride a motorcycle off into the you know sunset or something but it seems like they're kind of establishing that she might permanently join the team which i think would be great it would be really cool because not only would we have a different hero coming into play but we'd have different powers uh we get to see a lot more of uh vixen utilizing her powers plus this version of vixen has like actual martial arts training and stuff and the present day version of Vixen uh, for those of you who might not watch Arrow she just uses her powers like she can fight a little bit but she's not like a black belt or you know like because they kind of explain like without her powers she's still like a third degree black belt or something like that so it's still a very different person because even without her abilities she can do a bunch of martial arts and all this extra stuff so it's actually really cool like she brings way more than just the superhero side of things She's just skilled in, like, her own personal set, even if someone steals the amulet or whatever. She can still, like, destroy a bunch of people. So, it's really cool that they're doing that. I do hope that she stays on, because we also lost quite a few members. Well, technically, we only lost two people. I guess Hawkman wasn't really... They kind of ended him off real early in the first season, and they kind of saved him at the end. But, um... You know, we lost Rip, because we, we still don't know where the heck he is. And Hawk Girl did take off, so that's technically two members of the team and so they replaced them seemingly at this point with both Vixen as well as um you know I, I don't even know his actual name I only know him by the hero name Steel at this point so we have the two of them maybe Vixen will eventually go back to 
1942, but she doesn't necessarily have to. Um, at some point, she'd have to get rid of the amulet, but they kind of make a reference in this episode that kind of gives them a little bit of leeway, where it's like, technically, she doesn't have to. Like, I just assumed, like, okay, well, you know, she's Vixen from 1942. She's in, you know, she's in the States. So somewhere along the line, she would be, you know, I just assumed, honestly, because of Steel, I just assumed, like, oh, this would be the grandmother of Vixen, the present-day Vixen, in some way, shape, or form. And then she was like, oh, there are legends say that there are, like, seven, six or seven amulets that were given to the different tribes. And I was like, huh, technically that means there could be seven Vixens then, and she could be wherever she wants to be throughout history, and we could still have present-day Vixen because they're from, they could be from two totally different tribes. And I thought, that's a great idea, because that allows for them to have a super epic crossover where we get two vixens in one episode. So they kind of gave themselves a bit of leeway. I have no idea if that's an actual part of vixen's story. Um, I would assume it is, and they didn't just make it up. But if they did, that's actually a pretty cool idea. So there could technically be multiple people um, with uh, vixen's abilities. But I thought that was great. I was like, okay, because they threw that in there, it kind of means that they have leeway to not force her to go back to 1942 if she decides the JSA has what they have in 1942 and it's worked. And I can continue to stay with the legends. I feel like once they, you know, stop Thawne and um, Damien Dark, I feel like they'll, that's how they'll end it is where, kind of like with Hawkman and Hawk Girl, she'll be a part of the team for the whole season and then she'll be like, all right, Basically, my mission is complete. I saved the leader of my team from being, you know, murdered and erased from history. So I'm going to go back to my initial, you know, my, my actual time period. So that would kind of suck, but I feel like that might be where it's headed. I hope not, because I really like her character. She's actually, they actually do a lot of group dynamics with her uh, in this episode. Because before it was kind of like, all right, the JSA was basically just like, the legend suck, and that was pretty much her whole role. That was everybody's role from the JSA. It was like, you aren't that cool, you aren't as good as us. That was pretty much it. So, you know, they go through, and one of the big things they carry over is for Ray because she's like, you know, um, I wish I could remember exactly how that conversation went, but it ends with her saying, if it makes you feel better, you're not really a superhero. So, of course, that does carry over because he gave um, Steel, you know, that super serum. And it actually gives him the ability to turn into steel, which I'm very curious how that came into play because I thought it was going to be, uh, from the trailer, I assumed that it was, he could basically touch anything and he would absorb that ability. Honestly, the only example I have is from Ben 10. I know that there's something else out there, but I can only think of Ben 10, so if you didn't watch that, I'm sorry. But that's what I thought his powers were going to be, is that he could touch anything. I guess Hulk is another example, like the old the crappy one that no one really liked. And so if he touched anything, he would absorb, you know, that, you know, element or whatever, and he would be able to control it, or, you know, it would just cover his body. But it turns out he just flat out only turns into steel, so I thought that was interesting. Not that, you know, the elemental thing would have made any sense either, because the other dude just got super strength, so whatever he did to manipulate it was very different. So, of course, he gets these new abilities, they end up in Japan, and... I enjoyed it. Like I said, I, I thought, you know, kind of their whole quest was pretty interesting to go through. I got to see a bunch of katanas. I got to see a bunch of samurais and some cool, you know, outfits. Um, I never thought Ray's suit looked that sweet, but when the one dude came in and he was wearing the Shogun helmet and the armor, I was like, that actually looks super badass to me. And I never thought Ray's outfit was super cool. I, was like, I thought it was an okay suit, but I never thought it looked sweet. I actually think um, Ray's outfit is cooler when he's not in the suit, when he just has, like, that red and blue jacket. I actually think that looks cooler than his actual outfit. I don't know if you guys think that, but I've always thought that. And they showed it, like, in this episode and the last one, so I saw it two times in a row. And I was like, man, I never really thought about it that much. But him just in, like, that jacket without the suit and stuff actually kind of looks really cool to me. Like, it's just, it's almost like, you know, I don't know, I guess, like, Superman you know, and like a lot of other heroes really, where they're in their everyday clothes and it's still the same outfit or same color scheme as their superhero outfit. But his just looks cool. I think because it's like actual, like the cool jacket and the shirt combo. And I was like, that actually looks cooler than the actual um, suit to me. But when the guy came in, when the samurai, the shogun came in, 
was like, that, I don't know why. That just that instantly made this, you know, I have an extreme bias for Samurai. So maybe that's all it was. It was it was a cool helmet, though. He had a great uh, show of the helmet. And they had some cool katanas in here. Um, uh, Masako's brother's katana had, like, a really awesome design for, like, the hilt. It was almost like a gold moon or something like that. I was like, that looked really cool. Was, I thought it was very unique. They didn't like, focus too much on it, but I definitely noticed that because it wasn't just the normal... Uh, black, um, I can't think of the actual name, but the black guard. So I thought that was really cool. I was like, oh, it's kind of like a gold, like, crescent moon or something with, like, some blue on the inside. So I was like, that looks re really unique to me. But the whole, well, not the whole, but, like, a big focus in this episode was Ray and Steel. And Ray being like, man, you got, excuse me, you have the powers that, I wanted to have for myself because based on being basically just destroyed by Vixen, <laughs> I realized that I don't have much to me. Like, I need to be more than my suit. I need to actually be superhuman. And now I've given that to you because, you know, I, your life mattered. So, you know, I, I had to save your life. So I like that idea. And he has to become the teacher to this character. And ultimately, he has to realize that he's more than just his suit, which is completely, you know, obliterated by the end of this episode. So I really don't know where they're going to go with Ray's character, but I'm actually pretty excited because now either they're going to make a brand new suit for him, which they could easily do, and it just, it would take a little bit of time, unless, you know, with, a, with any TV show, they could just be like, all right, it's three weeks later, and now he has a new suit. But I think we'll get to see a couple of episodes, at least the next episode, where he has to figure out what, you know, who he's going to be as a hero now without his superhero suit. Like, he's just Ray Palmer at this point. And I'm kind of excited to see that because that was his whole thing this episode where he's like, man, all I have is that suit. Like, you, you know, like his whole character arc has been, like, depressing. If you go from, like, the beginning of the series to now and, you know, from Arrow and everything, he started off where it's like, I don't know if it mattered. Like, I was, like, the super rich famous dude and I died. And nobody even gave a crap. And that was it. I got like a little sign, you know, when you go into the city. That's it. So his whole arc, I, I thought it had been pretty interesting. Like he goes from being depressed that basically no one gives a crap about the, the fact that he died to not being able to get the girl to now not even feeling like he's a hero in any way, shape, or form because now he doesn't have the one thing that makes him a superhero, which was his suit. So... You know, when I look at his character, I was like, man, they've actually done some really great stuff with Ray that's been really interesting. He's, like, got, like, the sad, depressing stuff, but it's really entertaining to watch. So, I'm actually really excited to see where they take it. I'm assuming he will get a new suit. Maybe he will actually develop the ability um, to, you know, shrink himself and stuff like that. I don't know if they're going to kind of go that route and do, like, actual you know, Adam, where it's, it's just the person. I don't believe it's the suit. I'm pretty sure it's just the person in the comics. So I don't know if he'll do that and, like, develop some sort of thing where he literally shrinks his himself. Um, he would still need something to protect himself because otherwise he could just get squished. So there, you know, there are a lot of questions there as to how they're going to make that work. But something's going to happen with him, and, I, and I'm certainly excited for that. Like I said, we have this crazy mystery now with Barry sending Rip this secret message that he didn't want... Uh, the team to know. So now we have you know, our two halves of Firestorm and Jefferson and Stein. They now know this secret and they have to figure out whether or not they're going to tell the team. Um, we have some great action in this, especially the scene with uh, Sarah and Vixen when they're fighting the samurai and stuff. And I love the fact that when uh, Sarah, Vixen, and Nick go into, you know, save Steel and uh, Ray, their, uh, their outfits were the color scheme. So Sarah had, like, a white one, Vixen had, like, a black one with, like, uh, yellow bands, and then Mick had, like, a black one, and he had, like, red bands on it. I was like, that's actually, that was a simple little thing, but it was cool to kind of represent their color schemes. Uh, we find out that Steel is no longer whatever his thing is. I don't know if it's hemophiliac. It's something that starts with hema and ends with something, and so he's healed from that, which I thought would actually be a big part of this episode uh, when he was stabbed. I thought he would have to control his powers to save his life because I thought he'd still have that condition but him activating his abilities would basically it would like overlay the wound and then once he let it go it would like instantaneously heal his body 
that's what I thought was going to happen initially. But then I was like, no, he's actually fine. So he's completely healed from that element, which I thought would have actually been really cool if that stuck around where it's like he still had that condition when he was human or when he wasn't, you know, using his abilities. But then when he would activate them, it could heal all those wounds like instantaneously, but he'd still have to worry about it if he was like, you know, if he was tortured or something or he was knocked out or some, you know, a superhero thing, someone somehow incapacitated his abilities that could still be a huge threat where he has to worry about bleeding out at some point. So I was a little upset. I was like, oh, that kind of sucks that they got rid of that because I think that would have been a cool element uh, to keep with his character where it's like he can turn to steel, but when he's not, he's insanely vulnerable. He's vulnerable like any other human, but he could also bleed out. So if he was hit with a tranquilizer dart and someone just cut him, you know, and, uh, like just cut down his arm and then just like left him there, he could easily die depending on how long he was knocked out. So they're just, you know, little things like that where I was like, oh, I would have loved to have seen them kind of utilize that element. And they still could if someone, you know, because Eobarthon gave um, that Nazi dude the initial version of the serum. So maybe he could be like, okay, I can see that, you know, and Ray tends to talk a little bit. So he might actually be like, yeah, I reworked your serum and now, you know, superpowers. Eobarthon would be like, okay, I'm just going to do some time travel stuff and figure out how you did that. And he might be able to take his powers away. So, who knows? You know, we'll have to see how it plays out. But I actually really enjoyed this episode. It had some really, you know, good action to it. Um, they had some good comedy. Like, Mick was pretty funny in this episode. Like, the ninja thing. Um, Vixen, he and Vixen had a cool little storyline where she thought he was the one that did it. But they actually bonded at the end. She had, like, the cool little shuriken throw into a sandwich. Like, you know... I'm giving you a present in case you need uh, proof that you ever went up against some ninjas and stuff. So she had a cool moment with them, and, you know, she was like, all right, this team may not be as bad as it seemed, you know, based on the whole, you know, Rex dying and, you know, him saying time traveler. So I'm excited to see where they take it. Um, definitely looking forward to what they do with Rain. Definitely want to know what you guys thought about this episode, of course, though. So... Please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And I do want to know what you guys think is going to happen, you know, with Ray's character. And I definitely want to know. It's, obviously, this is like always, there's always something thrown in super early on where it's like, there's a million theories we could have, but I still want to know yours. So I definitely want to know what you think this super crazy message was uh, from Barry in 2056 that he didn't want the team to know. Maybe that's where Rip is. Um... It seems like that could be possible, where he jumps into 2056, but with it being something that the team isn't meant to know, it's really hard to say. So I, I don't know what that is. I would assume that with it being a secret for, you know, I guess both seasons, and as well as the time in between, that was there for a very long time. Because, you know, once they take off, technically... Time just keeps going. So it's like they could jump into time and he would instantaneously get that message because they're just floating through the time stream. So they could get messages. I would assume, I'm obviously speculating, but I would assume once they jump into the time stream, they can get messages from literally any time, you know, that has, you know, the technology to communicate with the Wave Rider. So that could have been there from the first season. You know, right after they left, it could have been like, all right, there's a super crazy message. Don't want you to, you know, tell your team about this, so be careful. And like I said, it's hard to say if that armory was built based on the message or if the armory just happened to be there. Um, but it was kept a secret, and that says something. So, I, you know, like I said, I want to know your speculations on it, even though it was just introduced. I want to know what you guys think this big thing might be. Do you think it'll have anything to do with the big crossover? Um, will it be like, you know, the crossover be different than we were expecting with like an older version of Barry and, um, Oliver and I, I guess Supergirl as well. So I want to know your speculations on that. And like I said, I want to know what you guys think is going to happen with Ray's character in these next couple of episodes. And I want to know what you thought about the episode in general. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.